What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll do a video again on Coolify but uh, one neat feature that I think is not well known amongst uh, users of Coolify. So this feature is called the build server. So basically the build server is going to allow you to extract all your build processes, all your CI CD uh, on a separate server than your um, web application is running. So let's say I have my web application right here which is a Next.js app for um, my website mybookquest.com uh, and after that there's something I can do is uh, check the use a build server so what will happen is when I start a deployment what will happen is the deployment will trigger and then after that instead of using the server which is hosting Coolify and hosting um, my old application, so my web application, it's gonna take the resources from my remote server um, that basically built uh, the image, uh, the Docker image for the server. So let me show you how I can set that up. Uh, there's different ways you can set it up, but for myself, I used um, the Coolify documentations, which I think are pretty straightforward. Uh, but basically, it's pretty much straightforward what you need to uh, do. You basically need a server. So any, uh, it could be a VPS, self-hosted server. So for myself, I use a self-hosted server in my basement, which is the same architecture, CPU architecture as your main server. So in my case, I'm using uh, x86 uh, as my uh, server, x86-64. Uh, and my build server is the same architecture. So if you were to use ARM, you would need also uh, ARM server so that uh, the Docker image build is working for both servers. Um, and then after that, the documentation is pretty, um, it's pretty simple in terms of what you need to do. Uh, but uh, I'll show you how you would do this. So first thing first, what you're gonna wanna do is add a server. So adding a server is pretty straightforward on uh, Coolify. You just need to come to the server section right here. And once you're on the server section, you just click add server. Uh, and then after that, you're gonna have uh, multiple things which you can do, but basically it's gonna be uh, naming the server, adding a description if you want, the IP or domain of the server. So either if you're using a cloud provider, you can get that um, IP super easily. Um, or if you're using a personal, um, basically a personal server, you have the opportunity to use it with uh, cloud third tunnels, which is also a great way if you want to keep it securized. Uh, or you can also just use uh, the IP directly. You can specify the port if you want to change it. Um, and then after that, this is where uh, you need to specify the user. So since we're uh, building using docker and stuff like that docker uses root permissions so we're going to need to to use the root permissions um and that's why we're not going to use password uh, authentication via the basically via the internet we're going to use the private key so as you can see i have multiple private keys but you can select the first one uh, and basically what you're going to want to do after that is click use it as a build server uh, and this will allow you basically to use the server as a build server as soon as a build task is uh, sent from the Coolify endpoint. Um, and once you've done that, you can click continue uh, and I can show you I did it with my own server. So I have my IP right here. Uh, once you finish, you can click revalidate server, click continue. Uh, and after it's going to check, is the OS supported? The server is reachable, Docker is installed, the Docker version is uh, working. Uh, and then after that, as you can see, I have the name, the user, the port, uh, and I checked it as use it as a build server. Uh, and then after that, you can see the metrics. So uh, how much um, if you activated it, but you can see like how much consumption it uses and stuff. Uh, you can also see the private key it uses. So initially you're going to need to copy that private key to the other server so that uh, Coolify can talk to your server. So what you would do um, is you would come into the terminal of your Coolify instance. You would choose basically um, the uh, Coolify uh, terminal and you would just do SSH copy ID, then you would do the, um, you, you would just put the uh, SSH key right here. 
with SSH just like that and then you'd put ID RSA and you would put the remote server so right there and then you put IP so in this case it's just going to copy the private key to the remote server so that you don't need um, you don't need any uh, password to connect to the remote host uh, that um, you are connecting to so that's for setting up the server uh, and what will happen uh, once you've done that is basically you can go back to the server once you've copied the ID and as I said you can validate it uh, via the uh, validate server and after that if you wish you can also set a uh, configuration for Cloudflare tunnels instead of using basically a uh, IP directly with a port you could just use a Cloudflare tunnel so in this case you could maybe use it as uh, SSH um, so let's say SSH at uh, Coolify or something like that so that um, your traffic is behind a firewall, behind uh, logs and stuff like that. So that could be very useful depending on your use case. Uh, and after that, you can still always remove it if you want uh, by clicking delete right there. Uh, so this is pretty much for the server. Again, this server could also be used as a um, like a redundancy server. So where you have a fallback in case first server goes down, you could have redundancy across servers. But in my case, I really used it for build times because my server at home is way more powerful than the VPS I used and it's less costly to host. So I can show you then what happens uh, as soon as we start a build. So let's go to the deployments of my Next.js app and let's start creating basically a um, force deploy without cache. Uh, and as you can see, we're going to look at the server um, the server usage. And as you can see, it's going to start spiking up right here. Uh, just because we're basically using more CPU. So as you can see right now, we're uh, sorting by a CPU direct, which allows us to uh, see what are, what is using the most CPU. And as you can see, we have a Nixav task right now that is running. Um, Nixpax is basically the, the build um, uh, compiler that is used to build a Docker image and the Next.js um, application. And as you can see, the server has started ramping up a bit. Uh, we can see it's using uh, almost 2% of the CPU. Because the main problem is that when you start a build task on your server, which is the VPS that you're also hosting your, um, your web application, you will get most of the time uh, performance issues for the clients because um, they're pumping out all your resources. So extracting those um, build tasks on another server is generally recommended in any application. Uh, obviously when you're on Versal and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about that because they all have that in the backend. But I found that setting that up is way easier um just to basically uh save you some hassle of like finding performance bug and stuff like that so as you can see it's pumping a lot of resources even though it's this machine is a dual core uh xeon e5 2680 v4s uh so as you can see node is taking a lot of ram uh a lot of cpu which my vps only has six gigs of ram to serve the the, the front end so um, if you were to run that on the, like I would run that in the past on the VPS directly and I would get a lot of um, performance issues where um, the basically, as you can see, also the download spikes up because you need to upload the Docker image to the registry, you need to download it. Um, so it's just a way more uh, simple, um, simpler process. So. Coming back to that, uh, I think it's a really good way to maybe save you a lot of money. If you want to do it with a cheap, like $50 computer, you could do that at home where you just set up uh, this on your network, create a, a personal build server. Otherwise, you can still use cloud if you want, uh, but it's going to be a bit more costier. Um, so definitely, if you have any other questions, and now you can um, extract that process from your um, your main VPS uh, ask them any question feel free to uh, ask any of them 
Uh, and if you need any other help, my link for consulting is in the description, which you can um, we can talk about your project. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the